guys welcome back to the channel well the 2021 planting season has officially begun uh, we started been six days ago now and funny story on that is I had some footage lined up for you and somehow it got deleted so it wasn't nothing spectacular so you ain't out that much so we'll just pick it up from right here uh, we started last week on Friday we planted 120 acres of soybeans and it come a rain Saturday showered a little bit and then some more Sunday and again Monday ended up with an inch and a tenth total so that's kind of knocked us out uh, so here we are the following Thursday and looks like we can kind of get back in here uh, probably won't do any plant until tomorrow again so I'm gonna work a little bit of ground down and have it ready to plant for in the morning I uh, got some really cold temps here uh, today I don't know it's high in the I don't know mid 50s roughly somewhere in there and high winds so it's kind of bitter outside uh, had a little bit of frost last night in the area I personally didn't have none but it wasn't very far from me and sounds like maybe coming up here the first of next week it's gonna get really cold so we're I don't know right or wrong we're trying to do something I mean you feel don't feel right sitting around not doing anything so we felt like we got to do something so we're gonna try to plant another roughly hundred acres of beans before this rain moves in this weekend which this rain moving in this weekend don't sound like much at all so uh, hopefully it'll stay that way and then next week even if it's cold you know we'll still plan into that you just don't want cold and wet so let's get the old field cultivator fired up here and see what we can do so today we're running a Sunflower 6333 mulch finisher on a 9230 John Deere. Uh, that machine there is 34 foot wide. So we're going to jump out, go check behind the machine, see how deep we're going, see if we want to make any adjustments. You can also see on these Sunflowers, see how these disc blades from your on your wing, they throw to the center of the machine. And the disc blades on the center of the machine throw out. So that's kind of a neat feature. And then behind the disc blades, you've got a rolling basket right behind the blades. So they're catching all the dirt as it comes off of them disc blades. Them disc blades, you're only gonna run them about two inches deep. You don't have to get crazy with them. Uh, you're just kind of wanting to break the crust a little bit. Then we got C shanks on the rest of the machine, followed up with a six bar harrow. Now all this ground that we're doing, we worked it down Oh, it's been about right out a week ago when we started planting that first time. We worked a bunch of corn stalks down just to get them, you know, broke open and let them dry out, you know, with the wind and the sun. So this is all second pass on this. Now on the first pass, when I'm working it for the first time of the year, I'm going to be looking at going, you know, three inches of loose dirt in my tire tracks. But this second pass, I'm going to shallow that up a little bit because I've got all the weeds out. Now I'm just looking to level it up, get a few clods beat out of it. So here we'll get in a tire track behind the tractor. And so, yeah, I mean, you can see, you know, we're getting in there two, three inches deep. Yeah, it'd be three inches anyway. So that's plenty deep. I'm probably going to take it out a little bit. Now, when I plant beans, I work the ground a little bit finer than corn. But, you know, stuff like this, it's mellow. Your planter is going to break that up when it comes through. So you don't have to have bug dust. I don't like to work ground real fine, especially in the spring like this, because, you know, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get a hard rain. And if you've got that beat down to bug dust, it's just gonna seal it up and turn it into concrete. So, especially on corn, you know, if, if I got clods out there the size of my fist in places, I'm totally fine with that because that'll keep it from sealing up and getting a crust and making you have to replant it. So, but I am gonna take this out a little bit and see what we can do from there. Well, I think we kind of got her set the way we want her here, so we'll keep plugging away at it and see what happens. So yeah, we're rolling along about seven, seven and a half, which that's about right. I mean, I'm not looking to set any land speed records here, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's pulling nice and that's pretty much what we're looking for.
Well, I thought I'd show some of you guys who maybe left the farm years ago and, and haven't been back. Uh, you probably hear some different lingo nowadays. You know, guys talk about auto steer, GPS, all that good stuff on their tractors. So I'll kind of show you the basics here on the one in this particular tractor and hopefully it'll make sense to you. So first and foremost, you got to have a receiver. That's that yellow thing right out there. That's basically your antenna to pull satellite. Now this tractor here, this is what they call an original brown box. So this is basically what you would want to call first generation, if you will. This has been out the longest. I mean, this goes clear back to the very first start of auto steering tractors. And it's a pretty basic monitor. You're not going to do a whole lot with it. But if you're wanting to set up an AB line for auto steer, you push set up and you go to tracking. And then here, it'll tell you to save current location. So you hit that button. You gotta drive a minimum of 10 feet and hit it again. And that's got your AB line saved. So then it'll just keep driving straight off of that AB line then all the way across the field. Now there's other ways you can do it too. They've got, uh, some of it's called like adaptive curves. That means if you've got a somewhat of a kink in your field or terraces that don't always run straight, it'll actually, It'll still parallel track, but it'll follow curves and stuff. Now, like I say, this monitor here is pretty old. I mean, in fact, it's uh, 11, I think it's 11 or 12 years old now. And I'm actually surprised they still work, but they do, lo and behold. But they're just very basic. You can do other stuff with them, but all we use it for is auto steer. Now, our other tractor, the front wheel assist that does tillage, it's got a, what they call a 2600 monitor in it. It's more of a computer screen. Um, if you look back in the past, you've probably seen that on some of my other videos. That would basically be generation three, I guess, in a sense. They had the brown box, then they went to an 1800, then a 2600, a 2630. Now it went to, well, I think the newest one's a 4640, but I think there was a 4600 in there somewhere. But uh, when we get in the plant tractor, I'll show you that. That monitor is called a 2630, and that's by far my favorite monitor. Uh, they're very rugged, very versatile, uh, just easy to use, nothing to it at all, and they can do a lot of different things. They can auto track, you can use them as a yield monitor, a plant monitor, I mean, just a whole variety of stuff that you can use them for. So it's by far my most favorite monitor the deer ever had, but it's not the new one anymore that's kind of, I mean, it's been discontinued now or whatever, but uh, that's by far my favorite. And just about all these monitors do way more than we would ever do with them. We need them for auto steer, need one for the planter, which it's the same monitor does both. And used to always use one for my yield mapping and yield monitor and all that stuff. But uh, this combine that we traded for, it's got a 4600 monitor in it. So it'll do all that now. I won't have to take my 2630 out of the planter and put it into the combine anymore. That monitor in the combine will always stay in there and do everything that I need to do. Well, we got 66 acres done there. Got to run up here to the pond and do six acres there. And that'll be a wrap on this. Get her planted tomorrow. got her worked so I guess in the morning we'll get the planter filled up and oh we probably won't start too early because probably be some moisture come up tonight as cold as it's going to get and we ain't no big hurry we just got 66 acres to plant tomorrow or whatever that is so that won't be no problem if we don't have any trouble so yeah I guess uh next time we talk we'll be on the planter well we got the ground all worked yesterday things went really well looks really nice so we're gonna fill this planter up and go plant a few beans.
So the way this will work is I'll kick the tender on and I've already done my math as to how many pounds of seed I need in each side of the planter. So that's where my scale will come in handy. 3,383 pounds. And that'll be just what we need to plant all this. We won't have a bunch of seed left over in the planter that way. Okay, all we got left to do is change the depth on our row units. We're gonna plant these a quarter inch deeper than what I planted the first ones there a week ago. Um, in the past, we've generally planted beans just about as deep as we did corn. And we can have this argument all day long as to you shouldn't plant them that deep, whatever, but we've had good luck doing it. But we're so early in the year now, and with some rain in the forecast and whatnot, we're not going near that deep. Right now we're going I, I planted mine probably three quarters of an inch. We're gonna plant these about an inch. So we'll go back and change the depth on them. All right, so these slots are quarter inch increments and you can offset them. So right now we've got four and four showing. So we're gonna to go to four and five. So that'll let her go in a quarter inch deeper. Got five empties here, four empties here. So we'll do that all the way across this whole machine. get out and check our depth here one way you can do it is just back the planter up lift it up and back it up so that kind of shows you there but you kind of got to look behind because we've kind of got the air squished out you know once your closing wheels go over it and whatnot so we'll go around back and check sometimes on no-till or ground that's really hard you want to check in the tractor tracks themselves because on 15 inch rows you got a row running right down your tractor track and sometimes then can be a little bit shallow. Now, it shouldn't be an issue with a new planter with all new openers and all that good stuff, but sometimes in the right conditions, you can check and maybe have to set them rows a little bit deeper, but that's probably not gonna be the case here. Whoop, rolled him out. Try a different spot. that depth looks pretty good so I'm not gonna change nothing I'm gonna leave it right there so I think we're set to rock and roll so let's get her moving
plant are set up with row shutoffs. All them little bitty red lines there that are going to turn blue just like that, that's each individual row. And the little green box underneath controls that section. So when I'm planting beans, each little green box is representing four rows, and when I'm planting corn, it's representing two rows. Now watch here, when I come into the headland, they're gonna start shutting off from left to right. The reason they shut off left to right is, this field's got a little angle in it here, so my planter is not hitting the headland square. Because what them clutches do is them shut the row units off where you've already planted. It saves seed, so anytime you get an irregular shaped field or say you get done with a field and I've only got a five foot strip left, it'll shut every row off that don't need to be planting and only turn on the rows that need to be dropping seed. Now those row shutoffs ain't a huge deal when you're planting soybeans. They're more for corn. I mean, you don't ever want to overlap you know, and waste seed any more than you have to, but they're more beneficial on corn. And it's the same way, all my fields are mapped. So if I come to a waterway in a field or something, that's a grass waterway, then it'll shut them off as I cross it. So it works out real nice. shutoffs you got to be careful on them especially like on a new planter it took us oh 30 45 minutes to get that all set up because you got to measure all your distances between your tractor it was basically it's going off of your satellite the yellow dome on the front of this tractor it's going off of that versus where your row units are positioned and there's some time in there and different stuff that you always got to make sure is right otherwise it can shut off too soon or turn on too late and then you're going to have a big skip coming in and out of your headlight so it's not just as easy as flipping a switch and this thing knows you gotta get all your measurements just right so that thing knows exactly where to shut off and turn on at. i've seen guys have some real messes by not checking that and have literally 20 30 foot skips on every end of the field where their planter was uh, shutting off or turning on at the wrong time So this would be a good example right here. It's hard to see, but my last pass ended about the center of the hood. So I've just got this little gap to plant. So you can see right there, only half the planter is on. And here in a second, it's all gonna shut off. Boom. So that's how she works. There's all kinds of stuff you can do on these monitors. There's your guidance lines, but these show your totals, how many seeds you've used, average productivity, blah, blah, blah which the average productivity, that's normally around 30 acres an hour, but this is a small little bitty field here, six acres, and it's kind of cut up, so you're spending a lot of time turning. We got our seed just about right, 75 pounds left, so that come out just perfect. Always want to carry just a smidge extra so you're not running out. So yeah, we planted uh, 72 acres today. That's gonna give us a total of just shy of 200 acres that we planted for the year. Um, like I say, pretty good cold snap coming, and there's a chance of rain for the next few days, so it don't sound like much, but we don't need any. So I think we're going to end up parking the planter. This Today's Friday. We're going to park it till Monday, let this little system get pushed out of here, see if we end up with any rain or, or what we're going to do there. But um, sounds like we may end up switching over to corn the first of the week if it don't rain. Uh, we kind of want to take advantage of some of this early weather like this because it sounds like we do have some heat coming once we get through this next week. But uh, be nice to have some early corn in. That way this fall you're not having to dry a bunch or, you know, you never know what's going to happen there. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to play it by ear here and see what the weather does first before we make any move and then reassess it on Monday. So thanks for coming along today, guys. Uh, this was the second day of planning for me, first day for you guys. So anyway... We'll pick it up here next week. Uh, we're going to see. We may be planting beans. We may be planting corn. We just don't know yet. So thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next time.